Hello everyone. Today we're going to look at how we can update this value here inside of our user class with, with logic from our database. So number of checked out books, as we looked in the past, was always zero. We just left it this way because every time someone opened up our program, there was no longevity, no long-term persistence of our program. The data reset every time you'd open up the program. But now that we have a database, number of checked out books will be different when someone opens up this program because our database is storing that information. So we need a way to actively modify this field when the person opens up the program. So to keep in mind how we're gonna modify this field, we need to go over a couple of things really quick so the first thing we need to go over is the logic that we're, how, how are we gonna to get to this field? This field's protected, so we can't modify it directly from our user, right? Protected means it's private and private, but accessible to our subclasses. So we're going to use a method and you'll see that this method isn't virtual or abstract, so it's just gonna be the same for all classes, which is fine because this logic will be true for all classes, maybe except the librarian class, but we'll look at modifying that later if we need to. And then here we just take, it's gonna take one parameter, so whatever calls this method is gonna say what this value should be. And that's all we're doing. We're just doing a simple little method call to update this value. So that's all we need for the user class. Now the class that's calling the user and calling our database is our library book manager. It's right between these two. It's our service class. Here's our data class. Here's our data store uh, our models. User is a model class and here's our repository which is pulling our data in. And then we have a very simple constructor call to this method here. So our method is using the user. So whoever logs in, it's going to say, hey, this user, read from our database and populate the variable. Count. Count then gets sent to our user class, as we saw here earlier. So we have the framework now that's needed to update our count variable and our number of checked out books variable. We have that logic that's needed. So now we can implement the polymorphism of our iBook repository. First, we'll start with the mockbook class. So there's our mockbook repository, and I've already implemented the function here. So I've already said that we're gonna return an integer, and we're going to, it's gonna be the number of checked out books. And for our mock book class, we're just going to return the value negative one. We know that the value will never be negative one, so that's actually a good testing value. You'd prefer to see a value that doesn't work versus one that does. And then I have the template here ready for get checked out books. So the first thing I'd like to do very quickly is just show that when we run our mock book repository here, our testing repository, I'm running it here, we should get a value of negative one. And because I put that breakpoint right on this count, our count variable is negative one. So our mock book repository was being called correctly. And I don't know why it keeps doing that. And now we have, we can change this back to our SQLite repository and focus on building our SQLite function here. So now we'll build our SQLite version. We already have the logic that'll send from our interface to our book manager, to our user, to our protected field. So we have that logic in place. We really don't need to look at these anymore, right? Simple method that's being called in the constructor. 
then sending that to this method, updating that field. Now let's take a look at how we're going to build this query. Because as we, as we look at how do we get that value, we have to understand the tables. So we'll go over the tables here in just a second, but you'll see high level that our method here is very similar to how we built our user combo box and our get all books. We are able to use, we're able to leverage all the same code. We build a connection string. We use our same connection string earlier. Then we build our connection string. We open our connection and then we use our command variable and then we're going to execute that command. The first thing we really want to do is build a good query though. Our query needs to be accurate and spot on. There's probably a couple different ways to do it, but my focus will be on doing it uh, through a certain means that is very consistent and reliable. So this gets to how our database is going to operate here. So let me grab a couple of these. I'd rather have it right there, yeah. Let's grab a couple of these tables and just quickly go over how our database runs. So the most fundamental part is we just have a book, a book table that just says what type of book it is. So beyond that, the book table is only just saying information about the book. More significantly though, we have our library books table, which says which book we're using. So book ID one here relates to book one here. Copy number refers to just an individual copy. So I have three books of book ID one. So I have three to kill a mockingbird books here. And then I'm saying if it's available or not. So this table doesn't say anything about the user. So we have to use our checkout records table, which is our link to the user because each checked out book count will go for a different value, will be a different value for each user. So that's what our checkout records table is. It's just saying this user checked it out and it says what date, when it's due. And if return date's missing, we know that they haven't checked the book out yet. So the significant records are the ones that I've highlighted here. These three records have someone who hasn't returned their book yet. So these are places where we would see a user not have returned their book and the checked out count would be different than just zero. Every other user is going to have a one or a zero. These, these three users, user ID four, so that's this individual here with ID four, user ID four, user ID six, Grace Hopper, user ID 10, John Von Neumann. These individuals would have a checked out book count greater than zero. So now that we've built our framework, the, the table that's important to us is this checked out records table. This is the table that tells us how we can connect the information of if our user has checked out books and how many he has currently checked out. So we're going to leverage our query on this table. So let's bring this back to our C sharp program. So our query needs to look at what's going on with this table and we can write a new query for that. I have the query here. I'm going to paste it in just to speed things up. So select count is just a way of changing what our data is to counting the number of rows. So that's all we're doing. We're just counting the number of rows. 
From what table? This table we have here. So we're counting the number of rows from this table where this is a filtering mechanism where user ID equals user ID. So this at sign is denoting a variable that we're injecting into our table. So based on who clicks the login button, right, we have several users who could click the login button, Alan Turing, Linus Torvalds. So let's assume Edgar clicks the login button. Then we're looking for a table or we're looking for rows on our table that have his ID. So his ID is four. We're looking for any values where he might be found. And if the return date is null, which it is. So if this user with this user ID and return date is null, we'll be able to count the number of records for him and because this is this is a uh, changing variable we need to directly put in what we want to see for that variable I accidentally clicked start I meant to click run the query getting a bit of an odd answer here Two. So there's, aha, uh -huh. there's a hidden value. <laughs> that, that was why I added a value and I didn't refresh the table. So he has a second book here that's also been checked out. If we put in user 10 here, we would see he's got a count of one, user 10. Okay, so we have our query. Uh, if you want to see what it looks like without count, We'll do that real quick. It just pulls all the data. Pulls the columns. We're pulling the column data. But all we care about is if that row exists. And let's change this back to user ID because that's how we are going to send the user ID, which is being sent in from our get checked out books. So in our library book manager, we have the user and then I send in the user ID. We get the user ID from the combo box, right? The combo box selects the user. And then from the user, we have the user ID. That information is now going to be sent in to our SQL query here. So now we have a query. Now, all we need to do is two things. We need to assign this value. So that's going to come here. So the way we assign that value, we're going to use, we need to go inside this using statement. Usually there's the reader and the while statement, but we don't need a while reader because we're just going to run. We're not running repetitive lines of code here. We can just simply run the command. Grant command parameters add with value, right? Yeah, and then we're going to grab this value here. We need the at sign. It needs to be in quotes. And then we take user ID over here. And now we've put inside our command. Our command is going to, our command variable actually takes in this query here when we put it in to the right hand side over here where we create a new command and now we're also adding a parameter to this command variable and now we're going to assign to this count variable we're also going to return it here assign to this count variable whatever value we get back in 32 command execute we can execute a scalar because it's just returning one value it's not returning a bunch of 
row by row data. So we can use an ex execute scaler here. This should be all the code that we need. I wanna put a breakpoint. We have the breakpoint. Should be able to run this code and get back our count variable. So we should see zero for Alan Turing here. That's right. And then four is the interesting user. One, two, three, four, Ed Edsker has a value of two. So now we've updated our number of checked out books. We've created that long-term persistence of, okay, now we can always keep track of. If someone checked out books, we know it and our program logic will abide by those rules. So that's all we're gonna cover in this video. Uh, I hope this was instructive. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, bye.